Until now, we have talked about the first two approaches for recommended systems, which are quantum-based approach and collaborative filtering. Next, let's turn to the third approach, latent factor models. And this is a machine learning based approach. Let's start with the famous Netflix price that happened around a decade ago. Netflix price is a competition where we're given the training data of around 100 million ratings from 480,000 users and around 17K movies. And these are six years of data from Netflix. And the test data is the last few ratings of each user. And this is about 2.8 million ratings. The evaluation criteria is the IMSD that we have talked about before. And the goal is to minimize Basically, the goal is to predict the ratings such that this RMSE in the test data is minimized. And as a reference, the Netflix in-house system can produce an RMSE of around 0 0.9514. So this is about one star away from the ground truth. And this competition attracted more than 2,700 teams. And Netflix says that if a team can achieve a improvement of over 10% over the Netflix in-house model, then it, it's gonna give the team $1 million as the grand prize. And this is literally a $1 million question. So concretely, let's start with this rating matrix where we have like 17K movies and around 480,000 users. And each row represents the rating from one movie and each column represents a rating for a specific user. And for example, let's say that this entry means that movie one gets a rating of four from user three. So typically, as always, we will withhold part of the data as the test data set and use all the others as the training data sets. And the question that Netflix asks is that if you're given this training data set, can you provide the predictive ratings for these numbers such that the IMSE of these numbers are minimized. So here, this R hat XI is the predicted ratings and RXI is the true rating of user X on item, on item I. And the winning solution, which is from the team Bellcore, they use a multi-scale modeling of the data. So basically they combine three levels of models and they combine top level regional modeling of the data with a refined local view of the data. So for the global, for the global model, basically it tries to capture the overall deviations of users and, and movies. So basically it captures the global effects. And for the regional, level of the model, it uses a matrix factorization based approach. And this is also um, known as the latent factor model. And it tries to adjust the regional effects. And the lowest level of the model is collaborative filtering. And basically it tries to extract the local patterns. And next, let's talk about these three levels of models one by one. For the global model, it's actually quite simple. It starts with the main movie ratings over the whole rating matrix. So these are the average rating of all the users of all the movies. So the main movie rating of the Netflix is 7.3 stars. And let's say that for one, one particular movie, The Sixth Sense, the movie has relatively high ratings. The average rating of this movie is 
stars above the average. So it's like 4.2 stars. And Joe, this person is very critical. It's, his average ratings is actually 2 point, uh, 0 0.2 stars below the average. So until now, we will just subtract 0 4.2 by 0 0.2. So this gives us a baseline estimation of four stars here. So to repeat, the baseline estimation for Joe is 3.7 plus 0 0.5, which is the uh, bias for, for this movie minus 0 0.2, which is a bias for this specific user. And this gives us a baseline estimate of four stars for this user, Joe. And for the local, for the local methods, we can use the collaborative filtering approach that we have talked about before. Uh, for example, let's say that Joe actually didn't quite like the related movie signs. Therefore, we can further lower the estimated rating by a little bit and gives us a final estimate that Joe will rate the movie the sixth sense 3.8 stars. As a recap, remember that in the collaborative filtering approach, we actually first derive the unknown ratings from those of similar movies. So these are the item item collaborative filtering approach. We will first define a similarity measure S i j of items i and j, and we're gonna select the k nearest neighbors and compute, compute the ratings using this equation. So as we can see here, this n of i x is actually the items that are most similar to item i, the movie i, that were rated by this user x. So, and here we're using j to index all the movies in this set. And r x j is the rating that this user x gives movie j. So this is basically just a weighted average of of the, all the similar uh, ratings that this user gives. So now that we have figured out how to handle the global effect and the local effect, but how do we combine these two models, right? The solutions is actually quite simple. It can be, thought of as a sum of two terms, where the first term is the baseline estimate for Rxi. And this is just the global average of 0. Point, uh, sorry, this is just the global average of 3.7 plus the user bias, which is minus 0. 0.2 in the previous example, and plus the item bias, which is 0. 0.5 in the previous example. And for the second term, this is actually the same as the old item, item to item collaborative filtering, except that for each RxJ, we're actually subtracting it by the baseline estimate for the corresponding RxJ here. And as you have, may have noticed, we have several problems with this approach. And the first problem is the similarity measures are actually quite arbitrary. Remember that in the previous part of the lecture, we say that it can be cosine similarity or jacquard similarity. And sometimes you need to try a lot of different measures to find the correct similarity measures. And the second problem is the pairwise similarity actually ne neglect the interdependencies among the users, because this is the this is the item item collaborative filtering. And the third problem is that this is actually taking a weighted average, 
and therefore it can be quite restricting because the weight is actually computed exactly using the uh, similarity measures, right? And the solution to the third problem is that instead of using Sij, we can use Wij, which is the weight we're gonna estimate directly from the data.